Welcome to OTR Life with John. Uh, today, what I thought I'd do is get you a quick video out and talk about the school and some of the things that you're going to need to bring with you when you come to school, uh, especially when you first come in, like the first day. So the first thing I want to talk about, those couple of things I want to talk about before I get into that. Uh, uh, first thing is when you're, when you're getting ready to come to school at Millis, and by the way, it's a great choice, Millis Transfer. Um, I don't think you can make a better choice for a school. Um, but kind of plan ahead for it. Uh, most people spend a good amount of time uh, researching trucking schools, uh, that kind of thing. While you're doing that, uh, uh, make sure you have some personal expense money. Um, it's three and a half weeks here at school, probably another week before you get a paycheck under your belt at least. So kind of plan for it. Uh, nobody likes getting behind on bills and things like that. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to have some money to eat on and to live on while you're here. So, uh, start planning ahead early for coming here. Make sure, uh, try to get your credit cards paid up. I mean, whatever you have to do, uh, and try to get you a few dollars put back and, and, and budget yourself. Um, the second thing I want to talk about before I start is, uh, our recruiting department. Uh, we have a fantastic recruiting department. And they're really, really good about making sure you have all the information you need uh, about what to bring and, and those kind of things. Um, you'll get an email at some point that'll have a congratulations and welcome letter in it. It'll look something like this. I've got it highlighted with some notes, but it'll look something like that. Please take it. Take some time. Um, look at it. Read it. Check off the items. Make sure you have everything you need. Um, so that's a good segue into this. Um, so first thing you're going to need to bring is your driver's license and your commercial learner's permit with air brakes and combination vehicles and no restrictions. Um, uh, I literally have had people walk in without a driver's license before. Um, as Also, you want to make sure you have a current DOT physical, uh, current within the last six months. Um, you're going to need to bring your medical card, which is not always a card. Sometimes it's a whole sheet of paper that looks like this, but just the name for it in the industry is a medical card. You'll also want to bring your medical long form with you. This is the form that the doctor's going to have you fill out before he takes you back to examine you. Um, if you're, when you're leaving, if they don't offer you a copy of that, make sure and ask for a copy. Uh, they, they'll be glad to give you one. I've never heard of anybody being turned down with a copy. But one reason it's so important to make sure you have these things when you come is when you get away from home, uh, you know, we have students from Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia. I have students from Massachusetts and really everywhere. Um, once you get that far away from home, it's really hard to get these documents and we need them within the first few days of your class. Um, a lot of doctors, well, most doctors, I imagine, won't email medical forms and you guys know how the DMV is, especially right now, uh, Virginia, for instance, every DMV in the state's closed down. So kind of keep that in mind and, and double check and make sure you have these items with you. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, next thing that you're gonna wanna bring with you is uh, you, along with the attachment that I just showed you, you're gonna get an attachment for an application. Uh, please fill out the application ahead of time in your own handwriting, in ink, make sure it's signed and dated. Um, Again, this is just a time-saving thing because you're gonna. Have, if you don't have it with you, you're gonna have to fill it out here in class before we go forward. Um, so make sure you fill out your application. And have that with you. Uh, bring a voided personal check or a uh, paper from your bank with the bank name, address, telephone, uh, routing number, and your account number on it. You can get that at your bank. Just tell them you need something for direct deposit, and they'll know what to give you. Uh, and that's what that's for, is for direct deposit. That way we can get your check direct deposited into your bank account. Um, make sure you bring a social security card or a birth certificate. Um, we're also, we're gonna need one of those things before you can go forward. Uh, and, and if you think of a, a license or a DOT uh, medical card is hard to get, try getting a birth certificate or a social security card in just a couple of days. Uh, make sure you have one of those with you. Um, next thing you're going to want to bring is a Ram McNally's Motor Carrier Atlas. Um, I recommend the, the spiral uh, binding one that has laminated pages, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, those can get a little pricey depending on where you buy them. Um, but make sure it says Motor Carrier's Atlas. If it doesn't, 
then it is not an atlas that can be used by commercial motor vehicles. Um, you don't have to have one for 2020. Uh, I used one from 2013 to, gosh, probably 2017, and it served me just fine. Um, if you can find one maybe a year old, you might be able to get it cheaper. Um, but uh, try to get a hold of one of those before you come to class. Um, also, if you're planning on signing up for 401k, um, make sure you have social security numbers, birth dates, and addresses for all your family members that you're going to have as a beneficiary for your 401k. That'll be helpful during um, orientation when we're talking about benefits and such. Um, another thing you're going to want to have with you, make sure you bring outdoor clothing, rain gear, flashlight, and work gloves. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. You can get a poncho at Walmart for just a few dollars. Um, outdoor clothing, make sure you bring something that you can get dirty in because you're going to get dirty uh, doing pre-trips and things like that. Um, uh, summertime's coming up and it's going to be hot. Shorts are just fine, but make sure you have good footwear. Uh, I can't let anybody work with sandals or anything open-toed or exposing your feet or anything like that. Uh, work gloves, I prefer leather work gloves, that's just me. Uh, you can get a pack of three, like canvas work gloves, those blue work gloves. You can get those a pack of three at a truck stop fairly cheap, like nine, ten bucks or something like that. Sometimes they go on sale. Uh, but find a good glove that's comfortable. You'll need that when you're doing a pre-trip around the truck. Um, uh, you know, outside of that, guys, um, the thing that you need to bring with you most is a willingness to learn. Uh, you know, I can, I can talk and talk and talk all day long. And if you're not engaged, and if you're not asking questions, and if you're not actively listening to what we're talking about, uh, then you're not going to learn anything. Um, um, I, I don't mean that to sound hard, but it's the truth. Um, come in with a good attitude. Come in with an attitude that, that, that demonstrates a willingness to learn. Uh, getting a CDL is hard, and uh, it, it requires effort on your part in order to be successful at it. Um, so uh, let me go through kind of the way we do things. Uh, the first week is mostly uh, classroom. Um, we go over rules, regulations, um, all the different facets of driving a truck and, and, and safety issues, things of that nature. Uh, usually Friday of the first week, we start backing out on the backing range. We go through six maneuvers. We do a straight line back. We do uh, a blind side and a sight side offset. Um, we do a uh, blind side and sight side parallel and we do a 90 degree alley dock. By the end of the week, there is a test. Um, there is a time limit that you have to do all six maneuvers, but it's a very generous time limit. Uh, so the second week you'll practice starting that Friday, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, we test on thereabout Thursday or thereabouts. The, the next Friday, which is the Friday before the third week, we hit the road with a trailer on the, in the truck. Uh, that's when you're driving a truck out on the road. Um, usually what I try to do is I try to get, um, I try to get, um, everybody that I can scheduled for a CDL exam right at the end of the week. And we'll go down to Cartersville, Georgia, where we have an examiner working for the company. And, um, we'll try to get you your CDL beforehand. If we don't, if we can't schedule it, or if the worst happens and you don't pass, it happens. Um, it's not that big a deal, but it happens. Uh, if you don't pass, then you can come back while, while you're with your trainer out on the road. Um, 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 and he'll get you down to Cartersville, and you'll be able to test a second time. First test is free. Second is $50. And the third test, I want to say, is $100. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'll check it. Um, as far as going out with your trainer, uh, as soon as your trainer picks you up, you have to drive at least 15,000 miles. Um, the trainer decides when you're ready to get out of, get into your own truck. Uh, if he feels like you need to go longer than 15,000 miles, then you'll go longer than 15,000 miles. There is an evaluation process where you evaluate, where the trainer evaluates you and you evaluate the trainer. You should get an evaluation every week. So if you do have to go over 15,000 miles, then it shouldn't be a surprise. Most likely, uh, the average time out with a trainer is six to eight weeks. 
Um, most people go over 15,000. I mean, usually how it ends up is you'll hit your 15,000 in somewhere in Iowa or somewhere like that, and it'll be a Friday, and you won't get a chance to get to a terminal until Tuesday or Wednesday, and by that time, you've got 16, 17,000 miles. Uh, so just, uh, you know, don't set your heart on 15,001 miles stopping and jumping in a truck. Uh, you do have to take another uh, check ride with an instructor before you're assigned your equipment. Uh, usually that just entails uh, making sure you can back the truck in somewhere and you go for a ride out on the road to make sure you're a safe driver. It's a short version of that. Um, so I, I hope that's given you some insight on the school and kind of what to expect when you come. Please, please bring the stuff that I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, it's going to make your life for you and, honestly, for me and the other instructors a lot easier if you do. Um, so that's it, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, if you have any other ideas for videos that I can do or any information that you'd like to have, put it down there as well, and I'll try to do a video on that. Uh, and as always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And um, um, as always, stay safe, take care of yourself. Hope to see you soon.